This video is going to be about short division, otherwise known as the bus stop method. Now, imagine you were asked to calculate this. All right. We need to turn the pen on first. There we go. So 48 divided by 2. OK, I know this is very simple and most everybody could do it in their heads very quickly, but it's just a simple calculation to start with. Right, how would we do this using the bus stop method? 48, OK, here's my bus stop, all right, divided by 2, OK? Now, division is quite different from the other standard methods of calculating using the other operations, i.e. Um, addition, subtraction and multiplication, because we're going to start at this side of the sum, all right? You can imagine this is the tens column, this is the units or ones column. All right, we don't normally have to write this in, but it's just to show where we are. I want to see how many twos there are in four. I want four divided by two. You can imagine if I had four objects, I want to find how many groups of two. Let's have a look. One, two. There's two groups of two with nothing left over. Okay, so how many twos are there in four? two okay then I move over to this number here how many twos are there in eight okay and there are four groups of two and eight there's four twos and eight okay so our answer is 24 48 divided by two is 24 okay hopefully everyone's still with me let's look at something a little bit more challenging in that it is using a longer number okay so imagine we had 864 divided by 2, okay? All right, first we want to see how many 2s are there in 8, okay? Well, there's 4 2s in 8 with nothing left over, okay? So we can move neatly on to the next number. How many 2s are there in 6? Okay, there are 3 2s in 6, so I put that above here, great. And then neatly on to the next number, there's, because there's nothing left over. How many twos are there in four? There are two twos in four, and there's no more numbers. So that's our final answer. 864 divided by two is 432. Okay, still nice and easy. All right. This one is where it gets a little bit more difficult. Let's try this. We've got 75 divided by three. Okay, now hopefully you can see that this is going to be a little bit trickier. Now, we want to find out how many threes there are in seven. Okay, seven divided by three. Well, let's have a look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that's our seven. How many groups of three are there? So there's one, and there's two, I can't make a third one, but there is something left over. So I've got one, two groups with one left over. Okay, so I'm going to put two here because I was able to fit two groups of three and seven, and I've got one left over. And, and here it is a bit like the other operations and the other standard methods of calculation. We're going to carry the one that's left over, and we're going to carry that to the next column over. OK, there we go. We'll put that there. Now, remember, OK, this is the tens and this is the units. OK, one from here is 10 in here. OK, this is a 10. Right. And I've moved it into the units column. So this number is now 15. OK, so now I want to see how many threes are there in 15. OK, and hopefully you all know that that is five, okay, with nothing left over. And there's no more numbers, so that's my final answer. 75 divided by three equals 25. Okay, let's try another one. How about 76 divided by four? Okay, so how many fours are there in seven? 
Okay, should we draw it out? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, okay, we can fit one group of four, but we can't fit another one. Okay, so there's that's one with three left over. Okay, we're trying to find the highest multiple of this that can fit into this number. All right, so here there's one with three left over. So I'm going to put one there and we're going to carry that three over to the next column. So this then is going to become 36. All right, and nine times four is 36. Okay, so I know that's going to be a nine. Okay, so 76 divided by four equals 19. Okay. Let's try with something a little bit longer. 849 divided by 3. OK, so how many 3s are there in 8? 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. OK, 3 times 3 is 9. Now that's higher than this number, so that's too, that's too much. So 2 times 3 is 6, okay, so that's 2 groups, and that would give us 2 left over, all right, and I'm going to carry the 2 over to here, which gives me 24 here now. 3 times 8 is 24, There's, so I'm going to have 8 groups of 3 in 24, with nothing left over. So then I'm having a look, how many 3s are there in 9? There are 3 3s in 9. So 849 divided by 3 is 283. Okay. Let's try another one. Okay, we might have to carry more times here. Let's have a look. 297 divided by 9. Ah, now there's something a little bit trickier going on here. Let's have a look. This is where we start. How many nines are there in two? Oh, well, I can't make any groups out of that. I can't fit nine into two at all. So what do I do? Let's have a look at this. Here's two. So how many nines can I make? Absolutely none. And that's the answer. It's zero. OK, so zero. And we've got two left over, haven't we? OK, so That is what we're going to put here. How many nines can I fit into? Zero. And I'm going to carry the two. So I carry the two here. Now, sometimes you'll see when people are a little bit more advanced in this technique is they won't sort of bother with this step. They might just recognize that they can't fit nine into the first number and then immediately carry it. But just look at these first two numbers and say, right, I've now got to put 9 into 29. I think it's much better to do it this way because then you're using a consistent technique because you will have to do this when the numbers are in the middle, as we'll see later. Okay, so how many 9s are in 2? 0, carry the 2. So how many 9s are there in 29? Well, there's um, three 9s. Uh, is 27 okay so that's nearly there so with two left over I'm going to carry the two and now we've got 27 and as I just said three nines is 27 so this is going to be a three okay so 297 divided by 9 is 33 okay can you, we disregard this zero now it's 33 Let's have a look at another one. 228 divided by 3. OK, so again, can we fit 3 into 2? No, we can't. OK, so that's going to be 0 with 2 carried over to the next column. So now we're going to look at 
how many threes we can get into 22. Now, I know that 3 times 7 is 21, okay, which is 1 away, 1 less. So that's good. That's, so I'm going to put 7 up here and I'm going to carry the 1. And then I want to see how many 3s I can fit into 18. And that would be 6. 3 times 6 is 18. So 228 divided by 3 equals 76. Right, let's try this one now. 927 divided by 3. Okay. How many threes are there in nine? Oh, that's nice and neat. Okay, that's three. Okay, three times three is nine. That's easy. Now let's move on to the next one. How many threes are there in two? Ah, I can't do that. So there are zero threes in two. Zero with two left over. So I'm going to carry the two over to here. Okay, so I've now got 27 here. How many threes? Are there in 27? Well, that would be 9. So my final answer is 927 divided by 3. Final answer is 309. OK, now, so far, they, these have all finished very neatly. Sometimes we have what is called a remainder. So let's have a look at this. 740. 6 divided by 5. OK, let's have a look. How many 5s can fit into 7? Well, that would be 1 with 2 left over. So we carry the 2. OK, then how many 5s are there in 24? Well, 4 5s are 20. OK, and then we've got 4 left over, which we need to carry. OK, so there we go. Four left over. Now, how many fives are there in 46? OK, well, five nines are 45. So put nine there and I've got one left over. Now, I haven't got any more numbers to calculate, so I could simply put that I have a remainder and often put it like this, a remainder of one. OK, so the answer is 700. And, the answer to 746 divided by 5 is 149 remainder 1. OK, so that's one way of doing this. This would be a way of calculating this if you're sort of calculating with things that cannot be divided up, like children, people, animals, you would probably use remainders. OK, but there are other ways to do this. We could do something like this. I'm going to leave this up here. We could go into decimals. All right. So let's try this one. Seven hundred and forty six. Divided by five. Again, we're going to try. So seven hundred forty six divided by five. Let's see what happens this time. So. 5 into 7, OK, that's once, and we're going to carry the 2, that's going to give us 4, and we're going to carry the 4, and then we're going to have 9, and I've got a remainder of 1. But this time, I'm not going to just put remainder 1, I'm going to go into the decimal values, OK? So I'm going to put the decimal point here, and I'm going to put the decimal point here, and there's a zero here and there's there are at the moment zeros all the way along here. OK, there's a zero here and I can carry the one to here. OK, so now I have how many fives are there in 10? So how many fives are there in two? OK, so this is an alternate way of giving the same answer. So now I have the answer to 746 divided by 5 is 149.2. Now, there's another way that I could answer this, and I could give the remainder as a fraction. Okay, now let's go back and have a look at here. If you imagine we've got one left over, what is that one? What is that one? 
it is it's a one that couldn't fit into a group of five. All right, the groups or the holes or the sets are of five. So if you want to represent this as a fraction, you want to see how how what it is in relation to parts of five. So therefore, one is one fifth. Okay, so I could also give the answer as one hundred and forty nine and one fifth. Okay, you can see this here also because you know that this is the tenths column, and here we have this is two tenths, which we would simplify to one fifth. All right, we can have a look at uh, another one. Let's look at this one here. Three hundred and seventy eight divided by eight. All right, divided by eight. Okay. Now, I'm going to raise something else here. Not everyone is great at their multiplication tables. It really helps if you are. Okay, if you know your multiplication tables off by heart, it can make calculations so much quicker, so much easier. You don't even have to think about it. But not everyone is good at them yet. So if you're not so good at them and you know that you're going to need to do some calculations with them, remember that um, division is the, the opposite of multiplication. It can be quite helpful to jot down the relevant multiplication table. So in this case, this is the eight. So I'm just going to jot them down here. All right, so I might do something like this. Okay, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 72, and 80. Okay, so it just makes it a bit easier, especially if I'm under a bit of stress and I haven't got a calculator. Well, I haven't got a calculator. That's why I'm doing these paper calculations. It just makes it a bit easier. OK, now let's have a look. How many eights are there in three? Well, that would be zero. And I'm going to carry the three. OK, let's have a look. What which one of these comes closest to 37, but is either the same or less than 37. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, this is too high. Five times eight is too high, but four times eight is 32. Okay, so let's put a, a four there. Okay, and that leaves me with a five to carry over. So I'm going to put a five here. Now, how many eights are there in 58. Right, let's have a look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Ah, here we go. That's This is the closest and whilst being below. So 56. Okay, so that's 7. Okay, with 2 left over. Now, I don't want a remainder. I want to go into decimals. So I'm going to put my decimal point here, my decimal point here, and a 0 there. Okay, and carry this on. So I'm going to 7 eighths of 56. So I've got 2 to carry over. So now I'm going to see how many eighths there are in 20. Okay, and the nearest is 2 times 8, which is 16, which gives me 4 to carry on to the next one. Oh, I can put in another 0. OK, and there's my carry four. And I want to see how many eights are there in 40 and five eights of 40. And that's nice and neat. Nothing else to carry on. OK, so the answer is 47.25. OK. And I think that's just about it. Thank you very much. I hope this has been of help.